Welcome to Cat Chat the Finale, brought to you by Van Gogh's. I'm Pete Francis. We've got a great finale for you today as Tyler Gron and Carter Kopak will join us. But first, as we move on with this finale, there have been many who've helped us out the past three years with Cat Chat, many of which you haven't seen. Now these members of Cat Chat look back at their experiences. I've only been doing it for uh, one semester. Um, I'm helping out as a practicum credit this semester. Uh, I saw it just around town and I heard about it and I had some friends and people that told me about it and that I should do it because I knew my knowledge of sports and that I would really enjoy it. And since this is a career choice that I want to go into, um, I thought that was like the best way to get experience and to learn how to maybe possibly write a script and get into on-air like a uh, talking position so I don't know it seemed like a really big interest in my life so I thought I would join it and help out. I always loved uh, sports broadcasting and that sort of stuff and when I transferred up here it was just seemed like something fun to do and I would give it a try and I'm loving it. When I got involved with Cat Chat I was new on campus and was looking for something fun to do in my free time. I saw something on the NMU website about a sports TV show that was looking for crew and analysts. So I sent Pete an email and he told me to show up at the meeting, so I did. Uh, when I got there, they had me film the girls soccer game the following weekend. And I had so much fun doing that, I stayed on for the rest of the school year. Um, I started out by filming uh, a couple soccer games and some football games for the highlight reels. And then when hockey season came around, I started filming most of those, had a ton of fun, got some great experience. My roommate, Pete Francis, the host of the show, told me about the concept and I thought it was really interesting to have a sports show on school and there was a director position opening and it was a great opportunity to get some experience. I do really enjoy getting some post game because then I get to go in the locker rooms, talk to the players and coaches about it and you know get their thoughts on the game. I got to do a tour of the Superior Dome and Carl Palmer gave us a tour and it was really cool. We went up to the top, we went through the catwalk and everything and it was really neat. I got to see you know, where they used to do the propelling down and where they you know, bring the game ball and that sort of thing. It was cool. In last semester we added this new segment to the website involved a lot of photography uh, from the games and I got to do a lot of them which was a really great opportunity and great fun. Uh, I did sports like uh, football, hockey, volleyball and some soccer and they were really interesting because I got to see the game from a, an angle that most people don't. I got to be really close and personal with a lot of the players and just a lot of great moments. I remember one time in one of the football games I almost ran over by one of the, our defense players and I was literally yanked by one of the other photographers and I was a few feet from a few guys collapsing next to me. The most memorable experience I had was being able to go as the Cat Chat cameraman to the CCHA um, uh, to film the CCHA playoff special at the Joe in Detroit last year. Uh, while we were there, we went to a media lunch at Ford Field where the CCHA championship was going to be held. And, uh, while we were getting a tour of the stadium, somehow me and a Fox Detroit cameraman got separated from the group, and the bus that went back to the Renaissance Center almost left without me. I still haven't been able to live that one down. Um, but I had a great time on Cat Chat. I met a lot of great people and learned a ton. I want to say thank you especially to Pete for giving me the chance to help out with the show and for teaching everything that he did. It was just a really enjoyable experience and I really hope we can keep it going and I hope I can help out and get it and hopefully go and beyond the uh, 45th episode and see what we can do. Good stuff. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I'll be joined by Tyler Grant. Stay with us. Attention Wildcat fans. Vango's, the longest-running pizza parlor in Marquette, is a proud supporter of Cat Chat. Located on 3rd Street, Vango's is your neighborhood bar and restaurant 
with takeout and delivery. Open seven days a week, Van Gogh specializes in only the freshest ingredients. From the dough to the pizza sauce made from scratch, Van Gogh's uses the freshest vegetables for all pizzas, soups, salads, and specials, and has the best homemade food in town. Van Gogh's, come taste the difference. I just saved $44 on three of my family's medications with the MKS Prescription Saving Card. Stop into your nearby Snyder Drug and start saving with the MKS Prescription Savings Plan. Welcome back. Joining me now is Tyler Gron of the NMU Hockey Team. Tyler, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. All right, obviously it was a tough way to end the season. How would you rate the season as a whole? I think it was a good season. <clears throat> I think that uh, from start to finish, I think everyone learned a lot. Um, younger players got a good chance to get on the ice and uh, develop their skills. And uh, it didn't really end the way we wanted it to. But uh, I, think, I think it was a good stepping stone and a good year to uh, lean in towards next year. Yeah, this was the first season that you've been on the team where you guys didn't make it to the Joe. Um, is this going to serve as motivation, you think, for next season? Uh, absolutely. Um, I think even our, our seniors that are leaving this year, this was their first year um, in four years that they didn't make the Joe. And, I mean, that's unfortunate, but uh, absolutely it's, it's motivation for next year. Um, it's such a great experience, and uh, it's something that I wish I could do, you know, all four years I was here, and it's too bad it didn't happen, but... Uh, Definitely next year, the Joe is something we're shooting for, at least. Yeah, where do you see this team going next season, and do you think the team can get back to competing for an NCAA bid? I do. Um, I mean, we have players in our lineup like VJ, Higby, Ludwig, Wade App, Hanley, all these guys, they uh, just as freshmen this year. And uh, I think that with the ice time they got, they've really, they've really developed um, their skills, and they're, they're kind of learning their roles on the team. And I think our young players will be a huge, huge impact on our team next year. Now this year, you had a breakout year. You led the team in points. What would you credit your success to? Um, I mean, I'd like to say it's, it's like personal skill, but it, it really isn't at all. Um, it's 100% it's my team around me. Um, I mean, majority of my goals are on the power play, and it's everyone else doing work around me. And, you know, I get a lucky rebound or a good pass, and I, I just put it in the net. Um, I think my teammates helped me a lot um, from start to finish. So Now this season, you recorded a natural hat trick versus Michigan State. What was that like, and did you ever see yourself being able to do that? Um, natural hat trick, I can't say I've ever gotten one before in my life. So at the college level, I mean, I would never imagine that at all. But uh, the hat trick was definitely something nice. Um, I mean, I'm pretty happy when I score one goal, and to get three that game was, was really nice. But, uh, I mean, when you, when you go through the goals, like I said, I mean, first one went off the other team. You know, second one was just, just sitting there wide open. Third one was a beautiful pass from Kyle Fulmer. I mean, it's just my teammates helping me out. All right, now that the season has come to an end, what's next for the team? Well, I mean, you can never start thinking about next year, you know, soon enough. And so, uh, I mean, we, we have a bad taste in our mouth with how this season ended. Um, but, but, I mean, we're all, looking, we're all looking forward to next year. And, uh, I mean, Walt, Walt's gone recruiting right now, but uh, he'll be back in a couple weeks. And then we'll, we'll get in the gym and we'll start working out and we'll, uh, we'll get in a training program. And then uh, hopefully we can get the job done next year. All right, Tyler, it's time for five random questions. Now, the first question is a fan-submitted question, and it comes from your mom, and she wants to know where you got your haircut. Uh, <coughs> geez, I knew that was coming, but uh, I got my haircut from a guy on our team, actually. Sam Uchella cut my hair, um, and I got it done today, and my mom was giving me a hard time, but I got to say, before I got it done, it was longer than it's ever been before in my whole life, so. All right, last year when you came on the show, I asked you, who the biggest trash talker was, and you said Al Dorich. Who's taken over his role now since his departure? Um, he's exceeded Al Dorich. I'm gonna say Wade Up. Wade Up. He is. Uh, he's mean. He, uh, especially on the ice. You know, if you take him off, they'll let you know. But uh, he's pretty verbal. All right. So who's the toughest player on the team? Toughest. Uh, other than me, probably. <laughs> uh, Eric Svady, actually, uh, he's, he's a guy, uh, he scares me sometimes on the ice. He's, he's a tough kid, too. All right, you're from Alberta. What's the best thing about being from there? Um, 
you know what? I'm, I'm pretty proud to be where I'm from. I think that uh, any success I've had in my hockey career, you can contribute to being from uh, Spruce Grove, Alberta. I mean, it's such a, such a good hockey community. Um, I mean, I think four or not even, not even five years old, I had skates on. I was playing on teams, you know, you know, recess in school. I'm, I'm have a street hockey stick in my hand. You know, I've just, everything's hockey there. Hockey, hockey, hockey. And I got to be thankful for that. All right, the final question. Best thing about being an NMU hockey player? Um, best thing is, is probably just the opportunity to be a part of uh, such a good tradition and then such a good, uh, you know, atmosphere of, of hockey players. Um, People, people I've met here, I'll, I'll keep with me my whole life, and uh, I mean, it's just a great experience. Hockey school, you know, being away from home, I think everything's just, just wonderful, and I'm, uh, I'm humble for it. So. All right, Tyler, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you. That's Tyler Gron. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I'll be joined by Carter Kopak. Stay tuned. Attention, Wildcat fans. Vango's, the longest running pizza parlor in Marquette, is a proud supporter of Cat Chat. Located on 3rd Street, Vango's is your neighborhood bar and restaurant with takeout and delivery. Open seven days a week, Vango's specializes in only the freshest ingredients. From the dough to the pizza sauce made from scratch, Vango's uses the freshest vegetables for all pizzas, soups, salads, and specials and has the best homemade food in town. Vango's, come taste the difference. Welcome back. Joining me now is quarterback of the NMU football team, Carter Kopak. Carter, how are you? Very good. Thanks a lot for having me. All right. Now, this season you suffered a season-ending injury to your Achilles. How's your recovery coming? Recovery coming, uh, is coming great. Um, I just saw my doctor last week. I'm well ahead of schedule. Um, the frustrating thing about this injury is there's really no timetable because, for the most part, it happens to a lot um, older people. But it happened, and uh, I'd like to have a set date of when I'm going to be back, but I really don't know. Um, spring ball starting in a week. I don't know if I'm be able to do that. Um, I might be able to do that, but partially, I haven't really sat down with the coaches yet and figured it out. But um, I will be back hopefully in the fall, no problem. So that's 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 the big goal, obviously, to be back in August. But I'd like to be back as soon as possible. At what point, I don't know yet. So now off-season workouts are in full swing. What's been the team doing? Uh, the team's working out pretty hard. Uh, we just got finished up before spring break with five weeks of uh, winter conditioning, with lifting, running, um, all that sort of good stuff, fun stuff, I guess. Um, it was very difficult, very strenuous. Uh, you know, a lot of things got accomplished, though. A lot of toughness out of that, as well as strength and you know, fast, uh, fast switch flavors. Very, uh, we got very fast, we think, and hopefully that'll build for the summertime as well, and usually um, help in the spring as well. Now the spring bring, or spring game is coming up April 16th. What should we expect from the team? Well, actually, before the spring game, we have a liftathon. We'd like to get the word out on that. It's going to be a fundraiser um, for the NMU football team. We're trying to raise money. Uh, obviously, everyone knows about the budget cuts that are going on in NMU and. That hits everyone, including the football team. So, whether to give the word out about that, it'll be uh, at the Vanna Minarita, 7 to 9 on April 15th. Everyone's invited, public, uh, public admission there. And then, obviously, after that, you said the spring game will happen on the 16th. Um, you know, we, we expect a pretty good crowd. Obviously, family and friends are more than welcome to be there, and they will be there. Um, you're going to see a lot. I haven't really sat down and, you know, you know said with spring ball coming next week, this, the following week right now is going to really kind of get. I guess the goals we want to accomplish, you know, get out there and set. So I really don't know too much about the offense, the defense, what's going to get changed, you know, our philosophy, what's going to happen as far as, you know, differences, because obviously there are going to be some things that we would like to change and obviously improve on. What, what are those going to be? I don't know, but, you know, hopefully we have a big turnout that day and we can all find out together. Now, looking ahead to next season, are there any players you see having breakout years next year? Um, you know, I, I, hate, I hate seeing a lot of individuals because uh, I feel like I always miss somebody, but. I feel like, you know, we have a lot of people coming back, obviously, I think most people know about that. Um, but a lot of guys, uh, I guess, you know, we have some key spots, obviously, open for the offensive line, so we look for some impact players to come through there, as well as some, you know, pretty big, pretty big returners, and as well as the outside linebacker group. That group has been, uh, you know, the great part of that group last year was so much depth, and now we have a few guys graduated, John Blessing, as well as Eric Wells, who's um, coaching with us. But we have two more, two or three more guys who have played regularly in that position who are really going to take hold of that position, and I look to have, for them to have a pretty big impact on the year. All right, now you're heading into your senior season this year, and there's a lot of talent coming back. Right. Is next season going to be playoff or bust for this team? You know, I think uh, that playoff or bust mentality or, you know, kind of outside expectations, I think that's where you get those from. Um, obviously, you know, as a competitor, I think most competitors, they go in every week, every game, every season expecting to win expecting to win the national championship. So for us, we like to take it one day at a time, one week at a time. Right now, we're improving ourselves uh, week by week as far as, you know, we're in the classroom now learning the playbook. And like I said, with the spring game and the spring, uh, spring practice, we're going to get out there and try to improve our, um, improve our jobs and whatnot. So 
Playoff or bust, I mean, obviously, I could understand because that we have a lot of returners, and we, we welcome those um, expectations. You know, it's a lot better than people just expecting us to go 500, like it has been the years past, or maybe even worse than that. You know, we had, we've struggled, you know, quite a bit lately. But, you know, we have been building to this year. Obviously, we have 26 um, seniors coming back. So, yeah, we're excited, but obviously we're going to take it week by week, and we start Minnesota State, so we're looking forward to that first. Yeah, Minnesota State is the first game. That's the home opener next year. Now, this is a team you guys had a chance to beat. Yeah, you couldn't convert the two-point conversion on the last play. Right. Uh, how much are you looking forward to getting another crack at them? Yeah, absolutely. They're, uh, they're a great team, uh, talented, made the playoffs two years ago, had a pretty good year last year, playing a tough conference. with. Uh, they actually played with the national champion, uh, Minnesota Duluth. Uh, they played with them last year. So we're looking forward to it. Um, you know, I don't think anything needs to be said as far as motivation. I think, you know, the first game, especially the home opener, is going to be at home. So it's going to be, you know, it's hopefully a big buzz in the crowd. And uh, I think every, every time, you know, week one, you really want to start off on the right bat. No one wants to be one one especially. You want to start 1-0, and and that will hopefully get us ready for the, you know, conference grind. All right, it is now time for five random questions. All right. And the first question is a fan-submitted question. All right. And this comes from one Zach Nichols. Nice. And Zach wants to know how you get such perfectly groomed hair and a perfect smile. Uh, you know, that's a relative term. I think he's kind of giving me a compliment that I really don't deserve there. But, you know, I just take care of myself. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary, you know, brushing my teeth. Uh, I had a good orthodontist. My parents took care of me on that. I'd like to give a quick shout out to my mom who I know will watch this. Um, but yeah, orthodontist, you know, took care of me and brushed my teeth. And that's, that's <laughs> basically what I do, so. All right. Random question number two right. also comes from Zach Nichols. Glad he could contribute. And he wants, right. <laughs> he wants to know how it feels to be NMU's most sought bachelor now that he has graduated. You know, I'd like, to, I'd like to take that title, but I think everyone who knows me know that my dog, I think, attracts more girls than I do. So, you know, Strut, he has his ways with women, and uh, I just kind of take, what, take what's left kind of more than I go out there and settle. So. All right. Now, moving on, what's one thing the average fan doesn't know about you? Oh, average fan probably doesn't know that. I, um, my older brother actually was a 12th round draft pick of the Chicago Cubs in 2005. And then I guess another interesting fact that I like to tell people when I have to talk in class, we all know about that the first day of class, is I actually went to an all boys school, so I didn't have girls in high school, which is kind of interesting, I guess. All right. How about favorite TV show? Favorite TV show? Uh, really, I'm a big fan of Tosh.0 oh lately. Uh, that's pretty funny. I just got into that a couple months ago, but I watch it every Tuesday night now. All right, and the last question, if you could play any sport other than football, what would it be? Uh, I think my family would like me to say baseball. Um, not really a big baseball guy, though. So other sport that I would like to play, I mean, I guess it would have to be, uh, you know, I used to wrestle in junior high, and I didn't wrestle in high school because I was kind of afraid of shoulder injuries because, you know, quarterback and everything else. But I just like to be wrestling because I'm still a big fan of wrestling. I watched, and not WWE, obviously, this like, you know, college, collegiate wrestling. I'm a big fan of Iowa. I always felt like kind of wrestling is like the ultimate individual. There's no team out there to help you. And I like the responsibility of that where, you know, it's you or the other guy and you have to take all responsibility as well as all the praise. All right, Carter, any final thoughts before we let you go? No, like I said, let's get the word on the lift -a -thon. Um, That's April 15th. You can contact anybody, any football player, they'll get the word out. And uh, we appreciate all, all, the, all the things Catch have done, especially you. And we look forward to seeing you on TV in the future. All right, Carter, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. All right, that's Carter Kopak. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Bryce Burge will be joined by Dustin Branchow via Skype. You won't want to miss that. Hey Wildcat fans, for the latest news, updates, and online exclusives, check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash NMUCatChat. Welcome back to Cat Chat. My name is Bryce Burge. This time of year is usually known as draft season for professional football, and despite the recent NFL lockout, the seniors from the 2010 Wildcat football team have been doing what they can to improve their stocks for the upcoming NFL, CFL, and UFL drafts. One of those seniors is wide receiver Dustin Branchow, and he joins me right now over Skype. How are you doing today, Dustin? I'm doing all right. Just got a workout in, so now I'm just kind of relaxing. All right, now you, uh, you get the chance to represent yourself in Northern at the GLIAC Pro Day uh, this Monday at Grand Valley State University. And in preparation for that, you've been doing a lot of work. Yeah, you know, it, it's a lot more work than people might think. You know, after, after season, I got right back into the into the, the film room and I put together a highlight tape with my buddy Kreider and uh, we just put together a highlight tape and sent it out to a bunch of different agencies and it was sent it out everywhere um, and I have to get signed up with David Canner out of Florida and he called me and he said he wanted to represent me so after that and then I just started working out and, you know he's taking care of the business end of it so I'm just working out now and you know um, working at Advantage Sports um, two days a week I'm working out there and then I'm working out with the track coach here at Northern my speed so 
you know, it's just a lot of work, three months of hard work for one day, you know. That, of course, is tight end Blake Kreider, correct? Yep. Well, that's got to make things easier for you as you're working with a fellow teammate. Uh, you know, the best part about it is, you know, we're, you know, we're best friends. So we get to hang out. We, you know, do everything together and we're on the same schedule. So, you know, it's not really much. I don't got to worry about him going out and partying and, you know, screwing my sleep schedule up and stuff like that. You know, it's just a lot of, a lot, a lot of work that we put into it. And, you know, it's, it's nice to have the same person on the same schedule as you. With taking so much time to prepare, what are the things that you are looking to improve on? Um, you know what? The main thing that I'm worrying about right now is just my, my straight ahead speed and that 40 yard dash time. You know, as, as bad as it is, you know, they, they, they put too much hype into that 40, but you got to play games with it. You got to play the game. If you want to play in, at, at that level, you got to run a fast 40, especially at my position. So, what I've been really working on is my speed, and Advantage Sports has helped me a lot. And, and uh, Tom Barnes down at Northern, the, the women's track coach, has helped me a lot too. And, you know, just working on over speed training and, you know, also lifting and getting that explosive and power. And, you know, I was also running routes with a receiver coach. Um, he used to play at Northern, and his name was Chris Misano. He's helping me out two days a week with route running and just kind of keeping fresh with that. So I don't want to just go in there and only be fast, you know. I want to have be well-rounded and everything like that. If you got to make the decision, where would you like to play football at on the next level, and what role would you have with that organization? You know, I'll, I'll honestly play anywhere. Obviously, I want to play at the, the highest level. You know, the highest level would be the NFL. Um, if, if, you know, I was fortunate enough to have that, I wouldn't mind playing anywhere. You know, special teams, you know, take on that role, kind of get my foot in the door that way, and, you know, possibly just, you know, injuries happen. You know, I might be able to step up and, and play a slot, slot receiver role that I, I feel most comfortable in. Northern Michigan has enjoyed a long-standing tradition of having solid wide receivers coming through their program. How do you feel about adding to that legacy and tradition here? You know, it's just an honor, you know. Like you said, the last four years I've been here, I've been, I've been part of a lot of great receivers just in my time here. Um, you know, before me there was, you know, Vinny Mayfield, and then when I was here I had Fred Wells, and, you know, with him he had – Tons of scouts coming to practices, coming to games. You know, it's it just kind of crazy. And then you also have the Dan Elmores and you have Zach Nichols even. You know, Zach Nichols even. Well, thank you so much for calling in and being Cat Chat's first Skype interview. Uh, it means a lot to us, and we just want to wish you the best of luck when it comes to the GLIAC Pro Day on Monday. All right, appreciate it, man. We're going to take a quick break now. And... After the break, I'll be rejoined by Pete as well as hockey analyst Sean Kelly as we look back on our three great years on the program. Stay tuned. Can't make the big game? Well, Cat Chat's got you covered with live updates from NMU Home Games on Twitter. Follow us today at twitter.com slash NMU Cat Chat. Welcome back, and with me now are Sean Kelly and Bryce Burge to wrap things up. Guys, 45 episodes, this is it. I guess. I mean, you guys, are, you guys are graduating. I still got one more year here. Uh, with, I mean, you guys, you guys were the ones that started this show, and you guys were the reasons why guys like me, uh, Joe, the guys that we had in the uh, that segment earlier, were able to join in later and, and be part of something cool. And you know, you guys are heading on. I've got one more semester left. There's, you know, there's a chance that the TV show might go on if we can get long-term uh, student involvement. And uh, the radio show, I, that's something also that we did is we branched off into radio and I host that over at Radio X now and that show's still going on with very long-term plans. So, you know, it's here, it's been fun and we'll see if we can't keep it going. Thank you. Yeah, now we started this back in 2008. Sean and I were a part of the original crew. We had five people. It originated in the very first uh, NMU Sports and Special Events class. Then Bryce joined us by the uh, third episode, so we did nine episodes season one, 18 in season two, and we did 18 this year. Looking back, guys, what have been the most memorable experiences working on the show? Well, for me, the most memorable experience is uh, really getting to know everyone that works here. Like, uh, everyone that works here is very unique and uh, adds something to the cast. So uh, we've had a, a high turnover rate from last year to this year, so uh, a lot of new people have come in get to work with a lot of new people, meet a lot of interesting people. So uh, it's been fun. You know, it's hard, it's hard to really answer this one seriously, too, just because there's so many of those little 
funny moments that have come uh, come in and so when you think about the most memorable ones you start thinking about the uh the sean kelly short jokes <laughs> and you start thinking there's, of, there's a lot of ribbing uh, yeah it, yeah so. i mean it, you know the way that that we interact and like sometimes you know sometimes it gets too far so but usually it's that perfect level of you know just a bunch of guys and, and you know and we've had women work on the show too and you know we've you know just a, a great group of wildcats coming together and uh, having some fun with all this kind of stuff, and that's that's really what it comes down to. I mean, I mentioned Sean Kelly jokes, but, you know, there have been jokes about anything and everything. Hey, and earlier so. this show, there's, back behind the uh, desk here, there's a little, like, thing that separates the stage, and I came to sit down, and <laughs> the leg of my chair actually fell through the stage, and I almost <laughs> hit the floor. That was not too fun. Yeah, yeah it's I, a lot of fun uh, sharing these uh, close quarters on this desk with you. We should, uh, oh, yeah. if we continue this show, we should uh, invest in a bigger desk, I think. I don't um, know. This one's pretty yeah. nice. It's cozy. It's warm in. You guys are just lucky I'm really short and don't take up a lot of room. Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, you know, Getting back, uh, I like my uh, little flub I had in the first season. I think it was with the Alaska Nanooks. The Nanooks. Yes, <laughs> that, that's uh, I never lived that one down so far here on Catch At. Uh, and that kind of goes back to my first uh, my first show. Uh, I forget. I think it was Kurt Kemp didn't uh, couldn't come in that day, and uh, so I don't. I, my thing was I wanted to be on air, so I always wore a dress shirt each time, and. So I came in and we were talking about the NCAA selection committee or the selection and the, that bracket that year, and I nailed the uh, the upset pick, which was uh, Cleveland State beating Wake Forest. That was back when they had Jeff Teague on the team, and and you know just nailed that pick, and that's always been my back on the uh, my classic favorite thing. Uh, yeah. catch at plant set. Yeah, yeah, you know breaking out the uh, the fake bookshelf and all that other kind of good stuff, and wanted to get it going in this peop- uh, but uh, some people. Uh, don't look at me. Some people thought that was a good idea. So, I yeah. think the bookshelf has a lot of class, so I will so. have to say our set has come a long ways since uh, the first days. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And I think I think that's something else too is that we've come a long way. You know, we we've all improved, and one of the other ways is is literally we've come a long way. We've actually traveled a lot and done some cool things. Earlier this year, Mike Handled and I went out to uh, Minnesota State Mankato, got in an accident in the middle of Minneapolis because some idiot behind us decided that uh, two inches was enough room to give uh, in a busy uh, rush hour situation at the worst mi- intersection of Minnesota. Uh, but Pete got to uh, go to St. Paul to cover yeah, the Yeah, I got to go to the NCAA tournament this year. That was really cool. But honestly, as far as traveling experiences for me, the most memorable ones were the Joe. I, trips to the Joe were yeah. always a blast. I have to agree. It's, it's always great when you go to the Joe and uh, you have random fans from uh, Miami, uh, Notre Dame, even Grand Valley fans uh, that are at the Joe that enjoy college hockey come up to you and you're like, hey, you're those people from Catch At. And, and especially the parents that watch the show from the hockey team and in even other sports, you know. Uh, well, I mean, when we started up the show, Sean, I mean, at first we didn't know if anyone was watching. I mean, we, play, we put the thing on YouTube and we advertised it a few places, but we had no idea who was actually watching the show. And we, we got to go to the Joe, you know, parents would come up to us and fans and actually talk to us about the show. And, you know, it was just really cool to, to see that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you're speaking about traveling, you got to go to St. Paul. Bryce got to go to lovely Houghton. Yeah, I mean, Houghton obviously <laughs> isn't exactly the, the classiest of things, but when the women's basketball te- uh, team was doing so well last season, they made the NCAA tournament for the first time in forever. You know, I got to be there in SDC Gymnasium. We were uh, – Pete, you and I came up with Zach Bennett and yeah. Troy Evers. We drove up there and was on the corner of that court being as fans – uh, and such a big fan influence that we were the four of us were screaming louder than all of the tech fans could muster. I don't and know it, about that. Bro. Well, I got that from one of the players from from that year too. You know, because we would go up there, and when I traveled up with the team to cover it, you know, people were recognizing who I was too, and it was a great opportunity because then not only are you mixing it with the fans, but you're also mixing it with press, uh, uh, SIDs from other schools, and you get to. You know, you get to meet a lot of the guys yeah, that you, you've been covering on for so long. We've been definitely lucky here uh, as, as we've done this show. The teams have made the NCAA tournament. Yeah, uh, I mean, previously before right, we started the show, there had not been a lot of success, as right. far, in, in, in at least in recent years. But 
we were pretty fortunate to see some really good hockey teams, especially. That's, that's right. And uh, as you know, Bryce got to go see the uh, enemy women's team in the NCAA tournament. They had one of the bigger upsets in the tournament. And uh, the enemy men's hockey team almost pulled a big win out of uh, double overtime against St. Cloud State. Unfortunately, they lost. But uh, they really had a great bracket set up for them last year. If they'd won that, they would have been facing Wisconsin. And, you know, you and I have talked all the time, what if they had – had won that game. Yeah, I really wanted yeah. to see them play Wisconsin. I'm from Wisconsin, so I would have loved to see yeah. them beat Wisconsin. And one and one thing too is that that we didn't get a chance to, to cover about tournament teams was the women's soccer team made the first uh, their first NCAA tournament in yeah. their program history. That's something that you know the, the track and field teams uh, individually have made mm -hmm. nationals. So I mean we've you know we've gotten spoiled really with covering the the teams and volleyball three years in a row. Yeah. So looking back, guys, what's been the most memorable game you've covered? You think covered or attended? Either or. Covered would have to be the. It would have to be the upset of the women's of the women's basketball team. Uh, they won uh, their defense, which had pulled them up through the entire game, shut down Indianapolis, who had beaten. Uh, a Big Ten school earlier that year, uh, Atlantic Ten. They had beaten a, quite a numerous amount of D1 schools uh, in women's basketball that year, ranked no lower than fifth in the in the D2 standings. And they come in and they play Northern, and we hold them to their uh, season low, actually their decade low. They haven't had a, a lower total since 1983. So they've been <laughs> like we we trounced them in that game and. It was uh, it was a great thing to see. As far as attending, I think the uh, man, I don't even know yet. Probably one of the football ones, just because I used to run around with my shirt <laughs> off and my sh my chest painted with a yeah. flag, and would run around whenever we'd score a touchdown, and it was fun. How about you, Sean? Uh, well, I've in my years here, I've only missed uh, two or three hockey games, so uh, I've been very fortunate to watch a lot of good hockey up here. Uh, I would have to say. Both of my favorite games would have to be from uh, Enemy at the Joe. Uh, the first year they made it, uh, I believe it was, uh, well, the first year they made it when I was here, which was uh, the 07 08 season, I believe. Uh, they played the University of Michigan, and they were winning 3 to 2 going into the third period. And I remember just standing there with my hands on my head, like, we're beating Michigan right now yeah. at the Joe. We, they ended up losing that game 6 to 4, but. Uh, at least four of the goals that Michigan scored that game went off NMU players, and uh, it was just a really exciting game. It was uh, offense, goal after goal, matching uh, each other, and it was great. Then also uh, in a losing effort against Notre Dame at the Joe a few years ago. when they I, I would have to say when they tied the, the game, I yeah. think it was with about a minute left or something like that, that was probably the best single moment I think I had seen in my time. Yeah, it was great. Uh, you know, it was the early game, the 4 p.m. game at the Joe. It, there weren't that many people there, but uh, there was a lot of enemy people there, and that has been one of the loudest I've ever heard uh, a crowd before, even if it was just a couple hundred people. It was it was loud. It was actually towards the end of the game, so you had a lot of uh, uh, Michigan fans coming in for the later game that, were, that was watching the game too, but uh, it was very loud in there for just a couple hundred people that were there, and to score a goal like that, it, it was amazing, and, and – that was the number one team in the country at the time, yeah. and as fast as we all got excited, Notre Dame went down and scored like yeah. 30 yeah. seconds later, and man, that 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 was just deflating. And and I've I I don't think I've ever gone from such a high to such a low yeah. so quickly in a hockey game. So and I gotta add this in because I think you're trying to move on to the next one. But if we don't talk about this year's homecoming game against Ashland, it would just not be acceptable. The Jared Buss. Uh, one carry all season for the t a four yeah. yard touchdown run. That don't, was don't absolutely insane. Don't forget the uh, Tony Ari uh, catch where he just went up for it. I think it was on fourth down or third and long. Or it, was, like that. it was it was it was it uh, was fourth down because it was right at that edge of uh, Belmonte's uh, range, mm -hmm. and it was one of those weird weird times to to uh, get get that going. And oh wait a minute, and that driver one of the. That drive, the final drive, oh, yeah, cause Ari made that catch, yeah, and then it led to the touchdown. Yeah, I mean, it was – they really stepped up as a team that game, and there were so many – there were so many sporadic times in that game that there was just good plays being made, the John Blessing safety. 
that was a great opportunity. You know, that was a great thing that got the fans involved too. So, I mean, that game is a whole plus with the, the uh, championship team having their anniversary for that, uh, that game. It was just uh, it was a big deal. Yeah, that was a big deal. I always loved going to NMU football games. For most memorable game for me, I would have to say it was the Ferris State game at the Joe. Scoring three goals, and I think, was it a minute span, Sean? Uh, it was just over a minute. Yeah, okay. NMU scored three goals, and then NMU was up 4-2, to two, squandered the lead, went to overtime. Gregor Hansen gets the game winner, and that was definitely a great moment. Uh, yeah, it was It was wonderful. Uh, I have to question why people were running up and down the aisles with their shirts off <laughs> yeah. after we scored that winning goal. But, uh, you know, whatever is right in the moment, I guess. Uh, it, was, it was pretty fun for everyone involved. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, uh, any final thoughts before we end this? Thanks. For, you know, you, the, well, it's kind of hard because we've been, we've been trailblazers, essentially. Um, you guys have gone in and you guys created a television show. You created a television show. And even though that, you know, we don't get to film in the best spots and we don't always have you know, the the recognition of some other places like Public Eye and, you know, with the uh, public access channels and stuff like that. But we've gone in here and we've worked hard and we've done a lot of stuff. We've we've earned that respect by going places on campus that are going going places that other groups on campus haven't gone to yeah. before. And uh, it's great to have that happen. And, it, you know, I know that we haven't always gotten along together, but, you know, now as we've worked with each other for a while, it's it's a good experience. It's been a good experience. Yeah, I have to agree. Uh, you know, I, I definitely think there's a market here for uh, a, a sports television show yeah. for Northern. Uh, you know, you and I have talked about this off camera numerous times about how Northern is essentially could be the school of the UP. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I definitely think I mean, there's, a, there's no pro teams here. Right. And so, I mean, NMU Athletics is the main draw here in the UP. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I would love to see another show uh, come along in the future, possibly on, on television, you know, uh, you know, that takes up from where we left off. And we're just really kind of setting, setting the pace right now. This is uh, something that we started up three years ago. I never would have guessed it would have gone on for three years, the way yeah. the first, especially the first season when it was uh, really... It was a bit different back then. Yeah. Yeah. It was it is really tough. Uh, most of us had never been in front of a camera before. It, uh, there was lots of stuttering. I know I, I did uh, a lot of uh, swiveling in my chair and playing with a pen, and uh, that's why I don't sit with a pencil in front of me anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. Or ch chomping on gum like Mancosi that one episode. And, yeah. But you know. uh, where we go from here, uh, I would love a career in television. Uh, you know, I would love to work behind the scenes with uh, audio and cameras and stuff like that you know this show has really taught a lot of us how to do basically everything here yeah uh you you talked about the first season we had a five person crew we we're up a little bit maybe to a 10 person crew at most here yeah. now so a lot of us do everything uh we've expanded we've gone out to film games uh we've had to do audio on the fly uh we've had to learn editing on the fly and and uh that wonderful blue screen of death as well uh yeah so <laughs> It, you know, it's, it's taught us a lot about working, you know, on the fly and, and facing challenges as they come. And, you know, I, I think it's built up our resume and built us up a lot as, a, you know, as people, too. Yeah, speaking of resumes, we're all on the market. So, oh, hire us. Bryce, Bryce will be here next year, so I'll you be can here, wait on him. I'll be here he next can, year. He can still do freelance roles, though. So, and, and I do that already with my writing, so... I, I, I'm available. Uh, I'm not tied down to any area. So uh, if you're watching this from Texas or Alaska or even my home state of Maine, if you would love to uh, contact me. Uh, and you'll find our resumes online at catchattv.org. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. So. All right, guys. Um, I just want to say, you know, thanks to everyone that's ever helped with the show. Um, you know, it, ha it hasn't been easy all the time, but, uh, you know, we've done 45 episodes, and I think it's, it's something to be proud of. I don't think we ever thought when we started the show that we would get 45 episodes. I mean, like I said earlier, nine the first season, 18 this year and last year. So, you know, I'd just like to thank everyone, too, that has um, watched the show online and who supported us and, you know, had nice things to say about the show and helped us out. So yeah. I really appreciate it.
All right, so for Bryce Burge, for Sean Kelly, and the entire Cat Chat crew, signing off for the last time, I'm Pete Francis. Go Cats. Welcome to the first ever edition of Cat Chat. Alongside Joe Dexter, I'm Pete Francis, and we'll be bringing you the latest in NMU sports. wonderful to be here in the Upper Peninsula with so many youpers. <laughs> <laughs>